You look like I have like, like um, knee socks on. Hi, I'm Allure's contributing editor, Jessica Chia, and this is Almost Every Way to Get a Fake Tan. I look nervous. If you want to get a sun-kissed glow without some of the risks associated with UV exposure, aka the actual sun, keep watching because I'm about to try almost every method of self-tanning. And believe me, there's something for everyone, including classic self-tanners, body makeup, and one very sweet DIY option. Ready, let's do it. First up, foaming self-tanner. To start, I'll be trying an aerated foam, which is a slightly updated version of a classic foam formula. As with most formulas, I'll be applying it on clean skin and using this mitt. This one recommends that I leave it on for about six hours and reapply after about 30 minutes to make sure that I get my deepest tan. All right, one down, the aerated foam. Next up, coconut water tanning mist. So we start with a face, hold the nozzle, move it to spray. Oh. This clear mist was super easy to apply. Usually you're supposed to apply it six inches away from the skin in sweeping motions, but for the purpose of this test, I applied it a little bit closer to the skin. It's a little bit tough to see where the product's going, but I love the smell and that's huge for me. Next, we have bronzing mousse. This is a classic bronzing mousse. The instructions are pretty simple. All I have to do is apply with a mitt in sweeping motions over clean skin. I'm going to apply it to this little square right here. The interesting thing about this is that it instructs you to wait until your body is touch dry, and then you can actually get dressed and go on your way. The sooner you take a shower, the less deep your tan will be, but it's still going to progressively make you darker, even after you've taken that shower. Tan towel. <laughs> These are huge. Can never be too careful. I'm really excited to try this one. I've never tried a tan towel before. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a little towelette that has DHA in it, so it's going to leave my skin looking tanner later. The instructions are to keep your skin dry for about four hours afterward. That means no working out and no taking a shower. And if you want to reapply four hours later, that can bring you to your deepest tan. But you'd have to use a second towelette as this is going to dry out before then. Next up, dry tanning oil. Some of you might have heard of self-tanning oils. This is not only a self-tanning oil, it's a rollerball self-tanning oil. So just like you might guess, the instructions are to simply roll it on your body, blend it with a mitt, and wait two to four hours before you wash it off. I loved how chic the bottle was and how fun it was to use the rollerball, but I have to be honest, it was a little bit difficult to get over bony areas. But once I followed up with a mitt, like you see me doing here, it blended perfectly. Next up, BB Body Bronzer. This is an instant bronzing BB cream, which is essentially a tinted moisturizer for your body. It's hydrating and it's going to leave a tint on your skin, so it's great if you have an evening event or just want to tan for the day. I love that I didn't have to worry about any long-term mess as far as staining on other parts of my skin. And as you can tell, it's not that much deeper than my actual skin tone, so it really gives you a natural bronzy glow. This is a body luminizer. It's another product that doesn't necessarily tan. It just leaves a glow on your skin. There are two different shades I'd like to try. This gold shade and a deeper bronze. If I had to pick a shade, I would probably wear the bronze one. I love that it's a little bit deeper than my own skin tone. The luminizer is super easy to apply. I mean, this was like putting on blush or bronzer. I love it but I would definitely recommend using a kabuki brush, otherwise you'll get glitter everywhere. Next up, a tinted body mist. This product is definitely the thickest of all the temporary options I've used so far. It's got a lot of pigment. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that was honestly horrifying. 
It's very much like a foundation for your body, a full coverage foundation. If there's ever a situation where you wanted to say cover up really intense marker lines on your skin, this might work, but just keep in mind that it's more of a foundation than a body glow. Next up, we'll try an instant body blooming cream. Much like some of the others I've used, it's only going to give you a glow just for the evening or until you take your next shower. This one specifically is meant to blur imperfections, so veins, etc. It's very subtle, but I do feel like it's definitely blurring some imperfections, some pores, and maybe even a little bit of stubble. And that's it. Ta-da! Welcome to my cooking show, where we're making a homemade cocoa tan. This one's a little bit out there. Lotion mixed with 100% pure cocoa powder doesn't exactly make a good self-tanner, but it's kind of okay as a body frosting. I'm just gonna put a spoonful in there. And just keep in mind that the more cocoa powder that you add, the darker the tint is going to be. It's actually working a lot better than I expected and it doesn't feel gross whatsoever. It just feels like normal lotion. I know it's a little odd to put cocoa powder on your legs, but it smells delicious. I'm actually so impressed with That's this amazing. one. Isn't it good? And it gave me a really nice tint. Pre-shower tan. This one is extra cool for anyone who's like, I'm just too lazy to tan at home. Using a glove, all you have to do is put it on, wait 10 minutes before showering, and then you just wash it off. It's super simple. All you need is a mitt. Okay, voila. We'll rinse it off in 10 minutes and see how it turns out. 10 minutes later. You can't see any results here, but the color actually developed over the next 24 hours to leave a bronze glow. Now we're going to try something a little different, a professional spray tan. I'm not going camping, I am in a professional spray tan tent. Professional spray tans are my personal favorite because they give you the most even results. It makes sense, they're pros, they can see better, and they can also add in extras like contouring around your abs or biceps. After you get your tan, you'll want to wait a minimum of six to eight hours before you shower or sweat. During the entire life of your tan, about a week, you'll want to take lukewarm showers and pat yourself dry instead of rubbing. More rubbing means more friction, which means you'll shed more skin cells and the tan will look lighter in those areas. So it's been six hours and I'm ready now to wash off the guide color on any of them that have it and see the results. Okay, so I can already tell that the one that looked the darkest with the guide color is actually the darkest as far as it's developed. I don't feel like a whole lot's happened with my legs, but fast forward a day later, you can actually see that there's really noticeable development on the roll-on oil up by my knee and lower down at my shin with the pre-shower tan. Of all the methods that I tried, the aerated foam definitely turned out to be the darkest. And it might be no surprise because the guide color was the darkest, but the thing that I was most surprised at was how natural the color ended up being. The coconut mist. I have to say, I really can't tell much of a difference here, but it's very possible if I had fairer skin, I might notice a change. So the classic mousse is definitely working. I can already see a noticeable difference. And as with the aerated foam, having a guide color made it a lot easier to see where I was putting it and how much. The tan towelette developed very subtly on my skin tone. It's definitely an option if you're in the market for a more subtle glow. I loved how easy the roll-on was to apply, except it got a little tricky around the bony parts of my knee. I will say it developed way better in the next 24 hours than you can see in this video. It left a stain for a full week. Ah, the BB cream. I got way too much on my knee for that one little patch and had to dab some of it off, but it's all good and it gave me a slight tint. The body luminizers. These were two of my favorite. They look absolutely stunning on and I don't care what skin tone you have, they're gonna look great. This was our body blurring lotion. It gave my legs a little bit of a soft focus, which was really nice. If maybe you didn't shave so well, I don't know, a little stubble. 
I'm aware that this looks awful, but I do have to say that while I applied it, it worked pretty well. This is not one that you can wash off and expect to still look good. That cocoa powder is not going to stay after you wipe it off. I love an in-shower product. This is actually a pre-shower product, but it still makes me think that it's easier. And you can't see much here, but over the next 24 hours, it really developed and left a nice glow. The Professional Spray Tan, I cannot say enough. I'm totally a fan of this because you won't have streaks, it's done by a pro, and it's really the best overall turnout. And of course, we couldn't test tanning products without doing a transfer test. This is our BB cream. Slight transfer. This is our body foundation. The body foundation actually had much less transfer than I expected. Yeah, there's some, but it's not a permanent product, so I was pretty impressed. The cocoa powder. No surprise, there's a ton of cocoa powder on my towel. Now for our body blur. Definitely noticeable bit of transfer there. With the body luminizer, there's a little sparkle on the towels, but it's not much. And the body perfecter also transferred. I think the lesson with any of these is that they're pigments sitting on top of your skin, so there's gonna be some inevitable transfer. Probably steer away from white clothing. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, great. Yay.